All right, look, it was Mississippi Valley State. I get that. But Baylor might still win the national championship. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It's not one's day. It's not three's day. It's Tuesday. I'm Drake Toll. That's Brandon McKinnon. Brandon works for our Daily Bears. I work for Inside the Bears with Sports Illustrated. Brandon, I want to thank you and everyone at home for making Locked On Baylor their first listen every single day. I want to also thank you for your camaraderie, for your friendship, for your time sitting beside me. Yeah, and for your great looks and for your glasses and for the facial hair and for everything you do, your big muscles and everything. Um For sitting next to me at the Baylor basketball game on Monday, that Baylor won by a fi- by a final score of one hundred and seventeen points to fifty three against Mississippi Valley State, the third worst team in America. But as bad as a couple of things were, Baylor wasn't perfect by any means. Uh, this team is as deep. I will say it as deep as any Scott Drew team has ever been, including the national championship team. I completely agree. I mean, we were at the game, the scream game with 6,000 elementary school kids shrieking. And we now have to go see whatever the ear doctors are. um, Optometrists. Is that right? I think that's eyes, but yeah. Okay. Either face region. And, you know, we're, we were sitting there talking about that and, and saying, this feels like the point in the game where Drew empties the bench. Mm-hmm. And then he did. And we were like, oh, us emptying the bench is a legitimate five that could beat almost any team in the country. Yeah. At least we compete. Like, okay. Yeah. Compete. Sure. Um, you said that score and I had to look at the, the box score. If Baylor did not score a single point in the second half, Mm -hmm. we would have still beaten Mississippi Valley state Delta devils by eight points. Yeah. We could have put up a bagel in the second half and won by eight. So (laughs) I want to know because look, this is my, this is the first point that makes me think Baylor is unbelievably good at basketball this season. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read you a list of names, Jonathan Chamo, Chachua, notwithstanding because he is going to be hurt until maybe March and maybe makes a return. I just don't see it happening, but maybe let's, let's read a list of names here. Flo Thamba starts for Baylor. So does Keontae George, LJ Cryer, Adam Flagler, and Jalen Bridges. That five guys cannot be on the floor when you're up by 60. So you then have options that become Dale Bonner, Langston Love, Joshua Oshimuna, Caleb Lohner. Those four guys, also very good at basketball and will contribute as the first nine. The only two remaining players are Zach Loveday and my man, Jake Yunkin. So, again, I'm looking at you, Brandon, like, God, they're going to get somebody hurt. we got to put in the second team, third team, somebody. And it's like, that is the second team. Yeah, and I mean, even Zach, even Zach Loveday, like, Look actual minutes from last year you know like he he had he played 10 minutes i'm just looking at the box score he had six points and two rebounds he was three for four from the field with his only miss being yeah. a three-pointer i mean zach also looked good and yeah. jake give the guy more than two minutes the guy he also looked good um so you know i i think it's an interesting and a good problem to have um yeah. and i think it's just we're just gonna see a lot of this you know going into co- going into some more of the non-con games. I mean, you and I talked about that, right? It's like, we're going to see probably similar rotations where guys that you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be our top nine contributors are still going to play deep into the second half, Mm -hmm. you know, in the next two games before we go to Vegas. And I think that's okay. As long as everyone stays healthy, like think of how much time they're going to have on the floor together going into intense non-conference play and then conference play. Baylor... It, it surprised me how far Langston Love was down the bench as far as the guys coming into the game. But again, I think it's a testament less so to Langston Love's ability and more so to Baylor's depth and just how good they are with, you know, now Caleb Lohner being such a great key. The the guy that did jump off the page to me, though, uh, of course, Adam Flagler leads your scoring and is really good at basketball. Surprise, especially against Mississippi Valley State. Uh, and Keontae George is four for 13. Two for eight behind the arc. Freshman first game jitters. Started really slow. Settled yeah. in. Looked great. 
but had seven assists. Like when he right. started slow, he didn't force it. He had a ton of great plays setting up teammates, and I think that shows more maturity past that freshman jitter thing. But yeah, sorry, I, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I just, I, I want to make note that I thought Keontae George looked solid. I thought Adam Flagler looked fine, really good. Adam Flagler is good as advertised. LJ Cryer, I was as like he's LJ Cryer. I want to say impressed with these guys, but you kind of are expecting this. Mm-hmm. The one guy that I was holding out hope on, thinking it's like a hard maybe for me on whether or not he's going to be like take the next step, was Dale Bonner. And Dale freaking Bonner. Most of the tweets I saw were about Dale Bonner because he goes for 14 points. Guy pulls down, what was it, six assists and four boards and three steals, too. His defense was impeccable. Just, you wanted him to take the next step to be what Adam Flagler was after he transferred into Baylor, and Dale Bonner absolutely did that. Yeah, and I think it was interesting in the postgame presser, Scott Drew says it's good to see Dale do this. You know, mm-hmm. we were we, he said that they saw this in practice all year long last year. Bonner shot 40% from three at Fairmont before he came to Baylor. And it was just, a you know, Scott Drew said the game's slowing down for him. Said he thought Canada really helped with Dale running the offense, essentially, with, you know, Adam and LJ and Langston out still. So I'm excited. I mean... You and I and, you know, some of the other folks that were sitting in the media section were talking about Dale Bonner probably starts on four of the teams in the Big 12. If not more, for sure. If not more. And so for him to be our a part of our two guards off the bench, and you know that Dale can steady the ship. Like he showed veteran leadership in Canada when stuff kind of went off the rails for that like three-minute stretch when Mississippi Valley State went on a 5-0 run. Dale subbed back in, and he really settled the team down. So, yeah, yeah, I was really impressed, man. I mean, he stuffed the sheet, and he only had two personal fouls. When you have three steals and two fouls, you're playing defense with your chest and feet and not your hands. It's a great thing. A lot of fouls in this game altogether. Uh, the refs, the, yeah. They were ready, man. It, it's, They've been it's, really, it's really hard to, to have this desire to talk badly about the refs when you win by 64 points, but it's yeah. like they wanted to be a part of the game. They did. They got yeah. they got their money's worth, uh, and the over hit, thanks to The them. over and did hit. Baylor there were 40, 48 personal fouls. See, that feels a little excessive in a Baylor versus Mississippi Valley State basketball game, the Del- Delta Devils. Yeah, the math on that is more than one foul per minute, which is not ideal. That is unbelievable. Brandon, um, this, to me, the reason that I, I – and I we will overreact in the second segment of this podcast, by the way. The reason that I don't think what I gather from this game, the highlight that I gather from this game is Baylor's depth. The reason I don't think it's an overreaction to say that Baylor's the deepest team in college basketball – is the fact that when the third string guys were out there, when the garbage time guys were out there, they were still starting caliber players in the Big 12. That's just how deep this team is. Why are the national championship contenders that? They may not have the, they they don't. They don't have the best starting five in America. North Carolina does. But they still have the deepest team in basketball. And that's what makes this team, not even overreacting, national championship caliber in my book. Yeah, I agree. I don't remember who... I saw on Twitter that it was a you know a national college basketball writer. He just he tweeted Sharpie colon Baylor as in like filling out his bracket with Sharpie. And I I think it's I think it's okay for us to be excited about it at this point in the year. If you think about where we were at this point last year, yeah. we'd already lost Langston for the year. Adam was wearing a cast on his hand. LJ wasn't playing. Like there was so there was a rain cloud around the program, kind of like we were kind of trying to fit pieces together fresh off the natty. And I think it's good for Baylor Nation to be excited. It shows that Scott Drew is not only, you know, retooled, but he's rejuvenated the roster. And I think, I mean, we are national championship contenders again. And it's an incredible we, feeling. Leandro Barbosa, we are championship. My yeah. favorite Leandro Barbosa quote and the only Leandro Barbosa quote that I know, we are championship. Uh, Brandon, it's time to overreact. But first, I'm going to tell everybody at home about Nissan and the thrilling moment from Baylor football's win over Oklahoma this past Saturday brought to you by Nissan. Trust me, Brandon's not going anywhere. Now, thrilling moments could be anything from this game. Baylor had three interceptions against Dylan Gabriel. I know it kind of feels weird throwing football into the middle of this pod, but Nissan. Dylan Gabriel had three interceptions. They were all kind of fun, including Dylan Doyle's. So that those are certainly up for, for grabs. And Squirrel Williams' performance overall was great, too. He had plenty of plays you could count. But I think far and away, my Nissan thrilling moment is on third down. Late in the game, Baylor gets a first down and they win. Squirrel Williams breaks one. Houses it. Let's go 50 yards to pay dirt. Touchdown Bears. They win by 10. But 
He does what seniors do. He slows up, and my thrilling moment is not even a score. He drops dad at the 10-yard line. Impeccable. If he scores, 10-point lead for Baylor, two minutes to go. Oklahoma could easily score a touchdown, get an onside kick, and score another touchdown to win. But Squirrel Williams knew the assignment. And it may be weird, but fundamentals are my Nissan thrilling moment. You remember 99 UNLV. Squirrel Williams said, we're not letting any crazy things happen for somebody else. Takes a knee, and that's my thrilling moment. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup at Nissan are intended to empower drivers. So right now, go check out the Nissan Frontier, Armada, and Pathfinder today. Available at NissanUSA.com. Brandon, let us... Ready to buy a Nissan. Let us overreact. Let us buy our Nissans and ride it into the sunset with the 40 and O Baylor Bears. I don't want to go to 40 and O because the last no. undefeated team that came to a title game got clapped by this program. Um, never too soon to begin slandering Gonzaga, who we will beat in December. But and I do conference think play moving forward. Exact potential allegedly. Allegedly, but yeah. yes, probably. So let's um let's overreact to uh player awards first. How do you feel about that? Or I love it. General stats. So I'm gonna take a swing at things um and say that Kale, excuse me, that Dale Bonner wins Big Twelve Sixth Man of the Year, and the yeah. Baylor Bears go back to back for Sixth Man of the Year. Thoughts? I like. Okay. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want anyone to get hurt. If someone is going to get hurt and it is a guard, this team is okay. The only thing that makes me think Dale Bonner not six man, the only way he doesn't get six man of the year is if LJ Cryer, Adam Flagler, or Keontae George gets hurt. In that we're operating case, under the assumption we don't. Oh, we're in a vacuum? We're, you didn't are, tell me we're in a we vacuum. Are, we are overreacting in a Dyson vacuum. Yes. Easily Dale Bonner. After what? After... Such a complete defensive game on Monday. I I think that's safe to say that Dale Bonner has taken the next step to become what Baylor needs. He's also old, man. Like this yeah. isn't we're not asking you to be Jeremy Sohan sixth man of the year, which is kind of unique for a freshman who's a lottery pick to be that really unique. This is an old guy who's been he's done been good at basketball. Give me a yes. Oh so. Okay. Now next one. Next one. Um, of a player overreaction. Adam Flagler leads the Big 12 in scoring this year. Oh. Uh, Are you out on that because of other offenses that maybe rely on single players more? But for that reason, I think Adam is open and gets his. Yeah, you know, I the Big 12 to me has a lot of teams that are pretty spaced out, but the one team that I could see having just leaning on the guy would be TCU and, and Mike Miles. I I, think, I I could see Mike Miles absolutely leading the league in scoring. I'm going to balk at Flagler leading it because I would not be surprised, I would not be surprised if Adam Flagler doesn't lead his own team in scoring because I foresee Keontae George being an issue against bigger competition and LJ Cryer the same, while Adam Flagler is going to get a lot of attention from defenses. What say you? I mean, I could see that too. Um, I was just, you know, taking taking some swings at overreacting to the current, <laughs> the, all the stats we have. But I mean, in I our vacuum, to, in our vacuum, I mean, I would love to see Keontae, you know, lead the, lead the team in scoring. So I think that yeah, would were, be. Weren't you the one that wrote, stuff. dude? I read your stuff. I think I I saw that you wrote twenty five points per game or something just wild. I did say that. I also uh, said that Dantuan Grimes would be this year's Davion Mitchell, and then he redshirted, which was sad. So he did. There was a lot of nine a.m. The day of yeah. the game at nine a.m. He redshirted. Yeah, he did. Um, let me throw one more player right. reaction out, and then I want you to do either player or team overreactions. Let's see. Okay. Flo Thamba in his last ride at Baylor, a self-proclaimed old head in Friday's press conference. His words, not mine. Flo Thamba will average more than 10 rebounds per game this year. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no. Because... Josh Ojewuna, while not great, elite, ready, I don't believe any of those three words encapsulate him. 
I think that that he's like the definition of potential and could yeah. take some legitimate minutes off the bench. Also, Jalen Bridges and Caleb Lohner. I saw a lot of fight from those guys. They are going to steal rebounds from Flo Thamba. Flo Thamba will have a 15-rebound game this season at some point in time. Will he average over 10? I'm going no. That's an overreaction. Okay. Brandon, is it my turn? Is it my turn? Is it my turn? It's your turn, but I just want to read you one stat line about your boy Josh Ojinwuna, who somebody referred to him as Baby Joel at the game. I don't know who it was, but it might have been Before me. he even came in, actually. Somebody Before him was that. It was while he was checking in. Josh Ojinwuna played 15 minutes. Decent wow. time for your first yeah. first appearance in green and gold. In those 15 minutes, he had nine points. He had Gosh. seven rebounds, five of which of those seven rebounds were offensive. He had one block. And in 15 minutes, he had four personal fouls. Yeah. So the growth, we're yeah. looking for for stabilizing the good stuff and growing on the negative. But yes, now it's your turn. Very Ojuluna, very good, very uncoordinated. Uh, yeah. As am I, Josh. As am I. One of the uh, one more off season, that guy's going to be a, a beast. He's a starting five next year. Uh, Brandon Zach Loveday will not see action in 10 out of the 18 Big 12 games that Baylor plays. Oh, dude, that's tough. We're once again living in the vacuum, right? No injuries. Yeah, I was going to no. throw out a similar this is caveat. A vacuum. This is a vacuum. 10 of the 18. He will not appear in 10 of the 18, or he will appear in 10 or less? Sorry. He will appear in 8 or less. Overreaction. He'll play in 50% of the games because Baylor will be up big enough with five minutes left that Zach will check in. Uh, but you see where I'm going with that. Zach Love Day. I see, I see where you're going, but I also think Zach, I mean, especially like in these non-conference, you know, tune-up tournaments, I think Drew is still going to play with the lineup. We saw that last year in battle, you know, or in every year that yeah. they've done battle for Atlantis. Um, we've, you know, seen it time and time again, even in non-conference games that are like standalone. Like the lineups mm -hmm. in the Villanova game last year were wild. Like I think we're gonna see similar stuff where Zach will have the opportunity to show his like show that he has taken steps forward. He was a highly I mean he was a solid recruit. Like I, I think he'll play in at least half. I think that's an overreaction. My uh I'm gonna go within another overreaction, team overreaction for me. Baylor will not lose a game until Big 12 play. So that has so you're saying they beat you're you're saying they beat Northern Colorado Friday? No, so you're saying they beat Virginia, Norfolk State, by the way. Or Norfolk Northern State, Colorado's sorry, Monday. Northern Colorado. Yes, them too. So you're saying we beat Virginia and Vegas, and then we beat the winner of Illinois UCLA, uh -huh. and then we also beat Gonzaga. Not an overreaction. I Ooh. think I think Scott Drew gets it done. Let's do it. We're undefeated. We're undefeated going into the new year. I love it. And, and the number one team in the country. Um, my last overreaction, Adam Flagler is not the leading scorer on this year's Baylor basketball team. See, now we're at, we're at a, we're at a conflicting point. Cause I thought you would be, um, I, uh, I think that's, I think that's an overreaction. I think he's going to be the guy. Yeah. I think he's going to be the guy. Some I think guys get theirs. You saw, you saw Keontae play so unselfish in a game that our team was that much better that he could have taken over and forced the issue. Yeah. You, I mean, the ball movement was so great today. I think Adam is going to be the guy. Like, I think if it's like, we're in big 12 conference play, we need a bucket. Drew draws up an out of bounds play. I think it's, I think Adam is the first look just with his better in leadership experience. I think he's going to lead us in scoring. So overreaction. I'm, I'm overreacting. Take the, I will accept that. Uh, Brandon, before we close up shop, anything more? Um, 117 is a lot of points. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Baylor covered for those people that are interested. The over hit, like you said. Um, yeah, I'm excited to watch us play again Friday. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be cool to just continue seeing this this team come together with lineups like you mentioned. That's nine deep. Um, you're just hoping everybody stays healthy, and it seems like the team really does love playing with each other. You know, Scott Drew made it a point in the post game presser about you know, the team loving to pass, playing unselfish, not having any ball stoppers. It just, it, it feels different. And the offense they ran feels very national championship esque, easy to overreact against the Mississippi Valley state Delta devils. But is that what I feel Delta devils, baby, Brandon, before we hear from Scott drew, I just want to thank you for doing this. And where can people find your uh, really good basketball coverage? 
Thank you. Yeah. Um, so on our Daily Bears website, the whole team is doing a ton of stuff. Um, all my interviews that I've been doing with players and coaches are still up, hoping to continue that pending their availability going into the season. If not, we're just going to be doing a ton of articles, features. Um, we're about to run an interview that we did with the Baylor basketball team's primary content creator, Eli Pittman. Um, yeah. So we're going to feature some of his work, talk about talk that through with him. Um, but yeah, and then I'm just on Twitter at Brandon underscore Mac. Um, yeah, it's been dope. Thanks. Thanks, Drake. Eli was almost my little. Ask him about it for sure. Really? Ask Interesting. I will. Doubt. Well, let's hear from Scott Drew. Thank you as always, Brandon McKinnon, for joining the show today. Mr. McKinnon is basketball. Uh, and before we get to Scott Drew, I got to tell everybody at home about one of my favorite sponsors, one of the most common sponsors, Bet Online. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. Uh, yourself, my myself, not yourself, myself, yours truly, did some wagering on the fighting Baylor Bears at minus 44 against Mississippi Valley State. That worked. Uh, also, at over 144, which hit by a mile and a half. Baylor had majority of that themselves. Um, Big-time teams make big-time covers and big-time overs in big-time moments, and Baylor did exactly that. At BetOnline.net, it's where the game starts. Sports wagering and more. Go to BetOnline.net. And Scott Drew, what do you got for us? Well, playing the first game of the year, uh, we wanted to start it out the right way. Uh, I thought the, uh, the scream game was outstanding. Uh, uh, everybody that put that together, can't thank them enough. Uh, our players really wanted to play well for their uh, Hall all the future bears out there, hopefully. And uh, you score 117 points. I know uh, uh, people like scoring. So defensively, uh, uh, second half, we weren't as uh, uh, consistent as we were first half. But a lot of positives, a lot of things to build on. A uh, great way to start the season. Scott, uh, you had six guys scoring double figures. How would you like the way they moved the ball, shared the ball? Well, every coach in the country take 27 assists and nine turnovers uh, every day of the week, twice on Sunday. So uh, this group has been an unselfish group in practice, sharing the ball. We don't have any ball stoppers. The ball moves. we got guys that are all capable scorers um, and uh, like, how, like how they play for us. Uh, one area that hadn't been as good in our scrimmages was the rebounding, and that's what I was most excited to see today is how we got better there. And uh, this week, obviously, we improved that area 22 to 9 on the offense and 53 to 29 overall. Scott, obviously, Adam was good for you last year, but he's obviously in a different kind of leadership role. Talk about him having a great overall game and just what he does for this team. So yeah, I, I mean, uh, 8 to 1 assist to turnovers, uh, 6 to 1 for Dale, 7 to 1 by Keontae. I mean, you're going to take that every day of the week. Um, and. Adam's done that in our scrimmages and in practice. Him and Dale have both been outstanding at taking care of the ball. And Keontae is somebody uh, that, that sees the floor really well and has become more and more consistent with it as well. Scott, uh, the point in the game was 16 to 10, and then halftime 61 to 21. What do you credit the slow start to, and what clicked? Well, one thing about the, uh, our team is you, you see, we, we shot 34 threes. We shoot a lot of threes. So, um, when you shoot a lot of threes, you can you can rack up points in a hurry, and then you can go through a dry spell too. Um, so it, it, it's kind of like the long ball in football. <laughs> um, so the good thing is uh, uh, when we're making them, when we're taking the right ones, that's why the rebounding is so important. You're not always going to make them, so you got to do a great job on the glass. And if we can continue to do that, uh, good things will definitely happen for us. Scott, you mentioned one of your goals for this game was to sort of figure out rotation, see how the new guys mm -hmm. blended in. How did you feel like those new guys kind of settled in? Well, today everybody that played did a good job, so that rotations are working today. But uh, uh, I think one thing that is a little different with the transfer portal is you get older guys, more experienced guys uh, um, that, that have been in college programs. So sometimes when you bring in four or five freshmen, you might have three of them that are – they're two years away from helping you win. They can play, but they can't help you win. And um, we're blessed to have a roster full of guys uh, that can help you win. So uh, as competition improves, we'll have to look, adjust, um, find out what we need to do better. Um, but uh, I, I obviously uh, uh, you can play a lot of different guys. And uh, hopefully we don't have injuries, but that's why you got to have depth if you do. Scott, a game like this, focus can be difficult. How do you feel about your team's defense? 
But I thought uh, it, until they scored that five in a row, I thought we were really good. Uh, I think it was around the eight-minute mark, um, six-minute mark, whenever it was. But uh, before that, uh, I thought we we did a great job limiting them to one. The defense got better the more we played. And I think uh, that's that's – a lot of nerves. You had a half, basically half a team of guys never put on the jersey, and even when you do scrimmages, it's not the game, it's not uh, um, the fans, and uh, that always brings out you got family watching. It's a whole nother level. So uh, couldn't be more pleased with the with the start. Excited for uh, uh, the guys to get a day off, us to break down film, and then uh, this weekend, uh, obviously, competition will get a little tougher. Scott, uh, Deontay got off to a slow start shooting, but he's doing a lot of other. Yeah, well, I think uh, uh, that's something that uh, we were really surprised in Canada with Keontae. I mean, he had two 30-plus games, but he really passed the ball well. And uh, you're not going to make shots every every night. You got The key is the, the taking the right ones, and uh, his shot selection has improved, will continue to improve. Um, but his ability to uh, get his teammate shots is something that's uh, tremendous. And um, seven assists, one turnover. Uh, that's that, that's outstanding growth by him, uh, and then the six rebounds. That's outstanding as well by him. Coach, to put up that one seventeen in the game, you guys kind of struggled a little bit early offensively to get shots to fall. What's the ceiling for this offense when you guys are on the road? Well, I think uh, uh, we definitely can score a, a lot of points. The question is, when we're not making shots, can we defend well enough and rebound well enough uh, to win on those nights? So. Uh, that'll be something that uh, uh, we'll keep working on and growing toward because uh, you don't always make shots, and that's why the best shooters make 40%. That means they're missing six out of ten. Scott, uh, I think offensive rebounding was one of the concerns coming in. Yeah. Y'all had more offensive rebounds than they had on the defense. Yeah, that, that's what I'm most pleased about. We spent a week really trying to get better in that area, and um, we made we made great strides. Now we got to be consistent with it, but uh, to me that was – for the game, if you just said one stat you really wanted to look at, that was the one I was curious to see how it translate. And Josh and Flo obviously did a good job. It seemed like it was more of a team thing. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's what it, it's not going to be one guy. Um, I think we have good rebounders, but uh, collectively, I think we have to be a great rebounding team collectively. Because when you switch on defense, you have a lot of people that sometimes your point guards are on their form in, and uh, everybody's got to, everyone's got to be able to help out and rebound. Yeah, I, I really think uh, Canada helped him, uh, gave him confidence. Uh, probably the one area that he hadn't shown what he had shown in practice is the consistent three ball. Today he's three for four. Um, he shot it well in practices, and that that's really the uh, last step for him when we recruited him. He was a 40% three-point shooter. So last year he really improved and grew, but the shooting didn't translate now. And it did in practice. That's what was frustrating. Like, he was really a good good shooter in practice. But in the games, um, you know, I can become a little mental too. And I think he's relaxed. The game's slowing down. Uh, he's tremendous defensively. He really moves it well. And that 6-1 to one assist to turnover, I mean, that's what he does. I mean, that, that's been his ratio. He's been really good at taking care of the basketball. Scott, how, was, how did it feel seeing Langston out there aggressive mm. playing again? Yeah, really, really excited to see that. Really excited to see how aggressive he was. And, I mean, he hadn't been back long, and it's been a process. Um, the doctors have done a great job. Uh, Charlie and, and Dave have done a great job. And uh, Langston's really worked hard. And in the last month, um, completely different uh, player. And I think in the next couple months, same thing. He'll continue that upward, upward, upward swing. Yeah, obviously, you haven't watched film on this one yet, but what can you already tell us? Yeah, I think uh, um, you know, credit uh, uh, the scream game because uh, there's some defenses we didn't get into that we called, offenses we didn't get into. And that's where in an empty practice gym it's easier to hear everything. So communication, um, there, those probably seven or eight plays, that's something we got to work on and make sure that we get all on the same page. That was Scott Drew. Thank you, coach. And Baylor won 117 to 53. Yes, a real score. Yes, awful. 
I'm Drake Toll. That was Brandon McKinnon from Our Daily Bears. Come back tomorrow where we talk more Baylor basketball and football because both of those things are going on now. Great time for content and a great time to subscribe. This has been Locked On Baylor. Please come back tomorrow. Please, please come back tomorrow. Uh, and do what, what was it? Oh, thank you for making it your first listen every single day. This has been Locked On Baylor.